Hi, I'm David Siegel. I'm chief of the myeloma division at the John Thurr Cancer Center, part of Hackensack University Medical Center. I'm also the uh, founding director of the Multiple Myeloma Institute at the Hackensack Meridian Health School of Medicine's uh, Center for Discovery and Innovation. Uh, we are located in Hackensack, New, New Jersey. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the MM014 study, which is a two-cohort study uh, of uh, pomalidomide in the aftermath of uh, treatment failure from lenalidomide. So the first cohort has been uh, published previously. Uh, these were patients who, who uh, got uh, pomalidomide as second-line therapy after uh, progression on, on uh, lenalidomide-containing regimens. And uh, what it basically showed was that uh, the, making that class switch from, from, pomalidom from lenalidomide to pomalidomide didn't cost very much in terms of the expectation of, of response to pomalidomide. Well, currently one of the hottest drugs and perhaps in, in uh, this year's ASH, the hottest drug in the myeloma space, has been uh, daratumumab. And uh, so the decision is made to explore what the combination of pomalidomide, daratumumab, and corticosteroids look like in, in sort of the same situation, patients progressing after lenalidomide-containing regimens. And uh, what we showed was in this uh, population that was about 50% uh, patients who had been on therapeutic doses of, uh, of uh, lenalidomide and about 50% who were on 10 milligrams or less of lenalidomide, that once again, the response rates to this three-drug DARA, POM, uh, DEX combination was what was, would have been expected. So, in, in fact, this is uh, the study that has had perhaps the, the highest response rate to that three-drug combination. Granted, these were earlier patients, but these were all patients that uh, had been refractory to lenalidomide in the immediately uh, prior arm. Uh, additionally, there was no uh, particular toxicity uh, um, a signal that was uh, uncomfortable. Uh, it, it, uh, it was uh, reflective of prior experiences. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the, the point that needs to be made from, from this study and perhaps from some other studies is that this notion that we have uh, that a class switch is necessary. And when I say that we have, uh, certainly out there in the oncology community, but also amongst those of us who uh, consider ourselves uh, as uh, myeloma experts, um, not always sure what that means, but uh, that, uh, that uh, you know, patient is progressing on lenalidomide, it's not appropriate to go on to pomalidomide. Patients who are pr uh, progressing on, on bortezomib, it's not appropriate to go on to carfilzomib. And what this trial demonstrates is that there is no loss of efficacy uh, as we make, make that transition from, uh, from lenalidomide to uh, pomalidomide. So uh, I think uh, this goes at least some of the distance to put that notion uh, to, to, to rest. And I think that's, an, uh, uh, that's a very important uh, concept that we all need to keep in mind.